Hello, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to create an engaging and interactive photo gallery using PowerPoint. To start, let me begin with showing you a quick demonstration of what we're going to create in this tutorial. The gallery that we're using, instead of using real photographs to keep things simpler, I've just used uh, coloured and numbered shapes that would represent different uh, images, such as different products, etc. We've got this grid view at the beginning with thumbnail images we click on a thumbnail and then we have the facilities to do things like navigate left and right perhaps choose thumbnails at the bottom to navigate between the images uh, we've got a way of returning back to the grid view and finally we've got a feature here where you can get further information by triggering an animation to see some product information okay so these are the things that we are going to be trying to create in this demonstration so starting from a new blank presentation, uh, I am going to change the first layout slide to be blank and insert some shapes that effectively are just there as placeholders to represent pictures that would be in our slideshow. Um, so here after increasing the font size into the shape, I'm going to use the keys of Control C and Control V to copy and paste the shapes so they're all the same sizes. I moved them around and used some guidelines that were on there to make sure things were central. Now I'm going to use Control D to duplicate each of those slides so that the larger boxes all appear in the same place and the same size to make them consistent uh, across the slides. And then I'm just finishing off here by renumbering and changing the fill colour of the shapes to uh, make it easier to work out which slides are which. So the next step is going to be to link the shapes that are on the grid slide to their corresponding slides in the remaining for the large images. Uh, it's going to be the same for all of them, so I'll show you how to do it for one and then I will speed it up for the others. I'm going to choose the shape. Notice I choose the shape and not just the text and I'm going to right click and do link and I want it to link to not existing web pages but a place in this document. Then I'm going to choose the appropriate slide that it should link to, in this case slide number two, the blue one to the blue one and say OK. And now I'm just going to repeat that process for the remaining shapes. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to check that what we have done works. So I'm going to view this as a presentation. And as you can see, if I click on slide uh, one, it goes there. Uh, but obviously at this point, we have no way of getting back. Uh, but that is working. So what we need to do next is add the feature to allow us to link back. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is insert an icon onto the large image for slide one i'm going to choose an icon and search for the icon that is a type of cross and this looks like a familiar sort of icon that people would recognize for that um, and typically the closing and going back to the uh, main grid would be with in the top left or the top right of the slide i'm going to put it up here in the top right one and then what that button needs to do, that icon, when somebody clicks on it, we want to link that back to our slide here. Uh, I obviously need that on all of the other slides, so I'm going to use Control c to copy that icon. And then if I Control v and Control v on each of the other ones, it will just appear in the right place. So I wish this would stop generating ideas. Um, and the Control c Control v works really well because not only is it copying it as the same shape and size it's also including the link let's check to see if that little feature has now worked there we go it takes us back to and we we'll probably need to check all of them just in case uh, that is now taking us back to the main slides so next what we're going to add is when we're on one of the larger images we're going to add insert an icon that is uh, an arrow shape that would indicate to the user that they are going to be moving on to the, the next slide. Again, look how I'm using the guides here to do when I place objects. It's very simple this, we've done it before. Really all we're using is the link feature to link to a place in this document. This time I'm going to choose next slide because I can then copy and paste this icon onto other slides and it will perform that same task. Then what I can do is 
Control C, Control V to copy that paste one. Let's bring it over here and line it up in the same way using the guides. But this time let's rotate it around 180 degrees. And what I will do at this point is then go in and edit the link uh, that we've got there and we go to edit link because in this case we would want it to go to the previous one we press this one however as I'm, I'm on slide one in this case what I would probably want it to do is not go back to the title slide but I would want it to go on to slide four and we would kind of loop round that way and then the same with this one when I get to slide four instead of trying to go on and end the the presentation I would want it to go back to uh, slide slide two with the picture of one on it so here I am on slide one so what I want this one to do is go to this slide here okay now I can copy and paste uh, these icons onto other slides so control C and if I hold down the shift key actually control C for both of them I can control V those onto there um, I might need to go fix this one though so that it does go to the previous slide rather than uh, back to edit link so I don't want this to go to slide 4 I want it to go to previous slide like so now what I can do is I can control C these again pop both of them onto here and then both of them onto here with control V again and just fix up this one so that when we edit the link on it it will go back to slide one like so let's just have a look see if that's all working uh, we are on slide four next will bring us around to one two three four and then if you wanted to go backwards three two one and then i'll loop back around to four The other thing that we could do is we could make it so that we could auto transition between these. So once we've maybe uh, reached slide number one, we could say let's make it transition automatically after a sort of period of say three or four seconds when the user's had a chance to look at that photograph to make it transition onto the next one and the next one. So I'm going to apply that to all of them. But I'm going to go back to here and I'm actually going to remove that feature. We don't want this one to automatically transition. Let's see how that works. So if we wait our one, two, three, and you could change that number to be something that works better if you feel people need more time to look at an image uh, that's on there. I've just jumped here back to the completed one that we started with and just want to talk about a couple of little extra features we had here on the bottom we added some thumbnails or icons that would uh, be used as thumbnails and simply they are just uh, icons with links so just like the uh, backwards and forwards and then the last thing that we added was a, an animation that we trigger off of somebody clicking on this eye here and that's it there we go I hope you've uh, learned something from this presentation and able to go away and make a, an excellent photo gallery.